John Whitehead of the Rutherford Institute refers to the world we're living in right now as an electronic concentration camp. He's being literal. He's not joking around. All of the science since before World War II has been pushed towards complete and utter domination of human beings, of society as a whole, of nature, of all of it. The stuff has been weaponized, okay? That's why when a lot of us, when the snow leaks came out, we kind of rolled our eyes. Good evening. I know many of you were shocked when NSA contractor turned whistleblower Edward Snowden revealed to America that in fact the National Security Agency had been spying on Americans. Because it's not, it's not that it wasn't a revelation to some people, but to think that the military came up with GPS and internet and computers and all these things and they weren't weaponized before they ever came into your home is kind of laughable. I mean, look who, what, do they just really care so much about you having a smartphone? DARPA just really cares so much about you having the internet? No, these things were weaponized first. It's a technological control grid. Some people argue, oh, Microsoft, after a certain year, they put in the Windows software, there's a backdoor. No, there was always a backdoor. It came to you first with a backdoor. There's never been a time where these devices have not been used to spy on everyone and enslave people. That's just how it is. So let's stop beating around the bush about that and just realize it's the way it is. So that when you start to look at some of the other stuff that's going on around you, you'll see what's really happening. I mean, look at people. What is happening to them? You know, they're walking into other people and walls and walking off of sidewalks into traffic. It's just, I just watched a video yesterday about all of the cases all over the world in the last month of people who have stripped down naked, lost their minds, and started beating everyone around them and punching through windshields of cars with their bare hands and just keep going like it didn't even hurt. And they're not on drugs and they're not, they're not drinking. An 18-year-old man is behind bars, accused of attacking drivers on Highway 441 while naked. A waffle-loving customer gave restaurant goers a strip show when she took off all her clothes and went berserk in a Georgia waffle house. They've just gone into what has been called a fit of rage or a delirium. What's happening? That is not normal to have that many people just completely lose their minds. Or all of a sudden you just have this rash of reporters all over the news, all over the world, who can't speak and their language comes out all weird. Ohio and Wyoming to join Florida suit. The states claiming the exorcist saw Antisracho and Blay Bringwitz. Confirmed today that more than 54 18 fighter jets are spending about as much as 20 and... And you're telling me every single one of those people suddenly had an epileptic special seizure that was a certain whatever, okay? Give me a break. If that were the case of something that just happens to reporters all the time, we would have seen that for the last 70 years since TV's been around. We didn't, okay? But we did see a lot of those cases back in 2012 all over the world. Why? Or all of a sudden you just have a rash of hundreds of teenagers in various cities across the country mobbing a certain area. Hundreds of teenagers storming a movie theater mall ends with gunfire and arrests. They were as young as middle school aged, as many as 900 of them trying to push their way inside. Come on, you could have a wedding and invite 200 people and not get them to show up, but you're telling me teenagers are so savvy with organization and planning that they can suddenly get 900 of their friends to show up and mob a certain location at once? No, we're living in a giant science experiment, ladies and gentlemen. That is what's going on. And I'm not even gonna sit here and go through the literally hundreds of patents that you can go find right now at the US Patent Office about how they can use electromagnetic frequencies, RF, all this to target the central nervous system, to turn switches off and on and make all kinds of things happen in people. This is something they've been studying since the Second World War, like I said. So by the time you get to this part, we're at a very late hour. This was sent to me by a friend of mine on Facebook, and it, it slipped past me. I don't usually go read DARPA business proposals because I already did that video quite a while ago, and I'm already pretty well aware of the kind of stuff that they're doing 
It's insane. They always try to justify it by saying, well, this is going to be for soldiers on the battlefield. Yeah, just like the internet, right? That's soldiers on the battlefield. That's not in every home in America. When they're working on neural interfaces to link people's brains to a computer, when they're working on pills that have antennas inside them that you swallow to send frequencies to your body, I mean, all this stuff that they're doing. But that's all because they want to help people, right, control bionic legs, microchip tattoos. I mean, because this is all going to be military, right? It's not ever going to be for the actual people. Well, here's one that is. And they openly say it, and the justification for it just made me laugh out loud. This proposal was put out in 2013. You have to scroll halfway down to get to the topic index. Check this out. They got things like remote sensing of electric and gravity fields. Single crystal self-assembly has to do with barium crystals, so that's kind of interesting. But the one I'm going to focus on right now is the portable brain recording device and app. Check out what DARPA wants to do. This effort will develop a portable, inexpensive, and easy to use electroencephalography EEG device and corresponding mobile application app for use by non-traditional audiences. The product will provide real-time quantitative assessments of neural activity utilizing display and analyses platforms people already own. So that's your iPads and your iPhone. And then it goes on to talk about what an EEG does and how it records the brain's electrical activity but it talks about how it's really great, but it's so expensive. So they've decided what we really need is an inexpensive, easy to use neural recording device. And the first reason they say we need it right here is that having EEGs in every classroom in America would engage students in science and technology in a way not previously possible in the field of neuroscience. Teachers could design lesson plans in the biology about the brain and sensory systems and use hands-on demonstrations to engage the students. Students could record their own brain activity and download the data to their iPads. Then it goes on to say you could include a portable EEG in a military first aid kit to help with traumatic brain injury diagnosis. Hello, okay? Uh, so, number one, DARPA's main concern is not the including of it as a military first aid device, which actually does make sense and is a way to justify such a thing. No, no, they want to have portable brain reading devices put into every classroom in America so that students can scan their brain activity and download it into their iPad, which we all know is being data skimmed and spied upon and all of that stuff probably goes to what the central database hub out in Utah that the NSA built or who knows right they got these places all over the country where they're collecting and skimming the data off of everyone all the time it's the internet of things we're there this is the smart grid and here's how it works and what I'm saying to you is they're not justifying this as we have to have it for the military they're saying they want to put an EEG reader in every classroom in America and then it goes on to say that a reduced price of $30 will allow widespread use by schools and average citizens. Because as you all know, every average citizen just walking around all the time needs a portable brain reading device that reads the electrical activity of your brain. It's just, <laughs> if you needed one more reason to homeschool your kids, DARPA putting brain recording devices in every classroom that to me that should be on the list of one of the reasons right because I've already told you guys we've already been over this Davos was even talking about it at their elite world economic forum earlier this year about how they're working right now with things like Obama's brain initiative they're spending millions of dollars on this to decode the brain models of various aspects aspects of language you know uh phonetics and syntax and semantics, and then once you have those models, you can actually decode uh, language. Hmm. Now, of course, the obvious application of that is decoding internal speech. And once you decode internal speech, then you essentially have, a, you know, the sort of worst possible brain decoding device. To read your inner thoughts remotely. And one of the technologies they use to do that is EEGs. So now let's get a smartphone-based EEG app, and we'll just put that in every classroom in America, straight from DARPA to your kid, you know, to foster his love of science. Give me a break. Personally, I think it's just a matter of time before there will be a portable brain decoding technology that decodes 
uh, language as fast as you can type with your thumbs on your cell phone. Wow. And, um, and everyone will wear them because people have shown that they're quite willing to give up privacy for convenience. <laughs> and then that, I think, brings up a lot of really interesting and scary uh, ethical